to see you. <laughs> <laughs> Hey. See, these guys are just going to wear themselves out. That's my strategy. I'm just going to let them wear themselves out. I've got this jet lag to fight as well, so I, I need I need all the rest I can get. All right, what's up everyone? Thought it'd be a good idea to take this chance to give a bit of commentary on this contest and to provide a bit of insight and a bit of context around what actually happened on the night. So the things that I did wrong in my preparation and my strategy and also what actually happened that was out of my control. And it actually starts here with Grabo setting up for his opening dunk of the contest when we all thought we were still warming up, actually. So there was some communication somewhere that led to this confusion. But, yeah, this added about five minutes of time between my final warm-up jump and my opening contest dunk, which in total made it about a 15-minute wait where I was just standing around. So Grabo punches this dunk here. But then there's just a bunch of confusion after. We're just all standing around, not sure what's actually going on. You can see here I'm not wearing any of my compressions, which I packed with me. For some reason I just thought, nah, she'll be right, like I won't have to wear it, but damn, I was wrong. Like it was, I was actually freezing out there, even though it was only 15 degrees, but for, for uh, what I'm used to, that's pretty cold. And plus a bit of the jet lag I was fighting. And I didn't take any caffeine or any Red Bulls or anything before this, which was really stupid. And here you can see the list. So I'm at the end of the list there, alphabetically last, by surname. 
each one of those dunkers ahead of me is going to probably take two minutes. So I was predicting like a 10 minute gap between like the start of the contest and then start of my first dunk. So you'll see here that Joel Henry was actually setting up for his opening dunk. But then he actually gets called back. We'll get briefed by Simon here about the, uh, the mistake that's happened. So now we've got to stand around a bit longer. And this was really surprising to me because in my experience, FIBA have been incredibly organized with their dunk contests in the past. So for this to happen at a World Cup, I think really caught all of us off guard. But this kind of thing, it's part of the game. If you're a pro, you've got to be used to this kind of thing. You've got to be ready for it. You've got to be able to adapt to it. So Grabo finally gets the contest started after about five or six minutes of us just all standing around. So at this point, I'm already looking at 15 minutes between my last warm-up dunk and my first dunk of the contest. So up next, we've got Joel Henry. He's run the clock down, and he just gets it in. Damn, it's risky to do it like that, but if you can do it, it makes for a good show. And here we got Lee Peck setting up his signature 180 double up. Punches it. And... You'll notice the common theme here is everyone is just opening up with a double up, which is always a good strategy on this stage where you need to just punch it first attempt. We got B Rough up next on volunteering for him. Punches a double up reverse. And you'll see here, I just get out of his way because we all know what's coming next. So by this point, I'm already starting to feel pretty cold. My legs are starting to feel a bit stiff. And we got Chris Staples up here. And he absolutely kills this. I just remember standing there seeing that in person. He just covered so much distance on that. It was crazy. And then I had to follow that up. Even though I was still feeling a bit cold here, I'd cooled down completely by now. But, you know, I'm trying to get the crowd into it. They were so loud that night. Probably the loudest crowd I've ever dunked in front of, honestly. And here I go. Yeah, I just completely eat shit on that attempt. I think that's the first time I've landed on my ass like that in a contest. So, yeah, it definitely rattled my confidence. So in this moment, I had sort of realized I was focusing too much on trying to jump over B-Rough rather than actually finishing the dunk. So on this next attempt, I do the opposite where I focus on putting the ball in the rim. But as you'll see here, I, I hit B-Rough on the way down. And I didn't get any real power or style behind it either, so all in all it was a pretty crap looking dunk. And you'll see here, I'm too far to the left, and yeah, I didn't bring my right leg up high enough because I was focusing so much on the rim, and that's what happens when you do that. In hindsight, like I don't think it was the worst strategy to go for this, as long as I was actually feeling bouncy on the night, but... Given the circumstances, you know, it wasn't the case. So I probably should have gone for something easier, safer, like a double up, push off sort of variation, or maybe a 360 windmill off the dribble. But yeah, anyway. Grabo's up next for a second dunk. <laughs> Man. He was crazy that weekend. Like, he was just flying. You just see right there, like, he just did that so easily. And it was the qualifying contest, not even the main contest. And he's pulling that out. And then you got Joel Henry here, windmill over three. Honestly, I should have done that dunk myself in the first round. And the way he punched it, he just hit it perfectly. Now we got Lee Peck up. We're starting to see some missed attempts now, whereas in the first round, everyone was perfect except for me. And he gets to go. One of his signatures, pretty safe for him. Solid score. And now we got B Rough. Double up over four. Little hang on the rim for safety. Gets a pretty decent score for that. Now we got Chris Staples up. And yeah, he just bails on that attempt. I think he just slipped on the court there. We tease it up again. I think he just loses the ball a bit there. So he switches it up. Clock's running down a bit. And yeah, just punches the hell out of that windmill. Sends the ball into the crowd. And he gets eights for that. Which, honestly, it's probably a bit generous, but... Anyway, here I am, lining up my second dunk. And... Just slips out. 
I specifically remember this ball being really overinflated, so I couldn't palm it the way I normally would. And you see there, I backrim it again. Now at this point, I just commit to the dunk because I needed a 28 to get to the top four anyway. So it was this or nothing, had nothing to lose, and yeah, just slipped out again. It was just so bizarre because not even two weeks before this, I hit this dunk first attempt in Manila under pretty much the same conditions. So unfortunately, I just couldn't get it done this time. But I still had a great time there. Really good experience. Shout out to all these dunkers here. Shout out to FIBA 3x3. Shout out to Dunk Elite for making this all happen. This was my first time in Europe and my first 3x3 World Cup, so for the time being, just got to keep training hard, keep putting in the hours, keep putting in the reps, doing whatever I can to get another crack at this, to redeem myself and to put on for my country. Go be rough. That was fucking nasty.
Oh!